Hello and welcome to Hobby Vlog number 56. This week has been almost entirely about one thing, and that is Santa's Express. I'm really close as I stand here. My massively overdone dose of PVA is hopefully drying. <laughs> You'll see what I mean if you get to the end of the video. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty close to done, but not quite. I was hoping to finish up for this video, but it's just not happened. The week has been crazy, and I have, I have actually lost two entire evenings of hobby time to other responsibilities. But I still got really, really close, so I'm pretty happy, and the tree needs to go up Monday, Tuesday next week. So yeah, I think I'll make it. I think I will be in time, and I think that Rosie will be super stoked to see that tree and to see that train going round and round in circles around it. So I'm very, very pleased. I have got a few other bits and pieces done for the week, but mostly it is Santa's Express, and sorry about that, it's quite a one-track video this time round, but not often they're not like that, so this is just a different week and just how it is. So anyway, I will stop rambling. I will thank you for watching. I will tell you, please don't forget to subscribe. It's wonderful to see how many of you are enjoying these videos. And just click that button, and then you'll always know whenever one of my videos is coming along. And I will see you again at the end. So grab yourself a cup of tea and enjoy. So we're throwing the games room now because um, I'm getting a bit more space and I can also hide it from Rosie easier, who does go into the um, in, into the lounge every now and then. So the what I've done is obviously I did this drawing of this line around and uh, I've been thinking that I probably made a mistake there which does happen uh, so I'm going to correct it and what I've done is I've made this little jig here and what it is basically is I've measured out so that's 10 centimeters and that's eight and that's seven okay and that's just the random size and what i've also done is i've put a little knock on a little a bit of cardboard on the bottom which is the width of the tracks and so i'll be able to basically slide that around like so um, and get the same distance on each side of the track for the uh, for the base so rather than it being like iffy and dodgy as it is at the moment a bit wibbly wobbly which isn't really what i want it's going to be more um, more even um, and I'm probably going to do this at 10 at first and just have a look and see what it looks like uh, mainly the reason is is because I've got 10 centimeter thick white foam which is going to be going underneath so what I'm going to do is see whether this little uh, jig works set the I may need to pin the track down because it's probably going to move but um, I probably won't do all of this on camera but the idea is that I'll be able to do this and that is going to get me, as you can see, a much nicer, much straighter line, which is actually going to keep the distance, as I say, keep the track central and make it look a little neater. So I'm going to pin the track down, uh, run that jig around, get a line, and I'll bring you back when I'm about to cut it out. That worked really well, actually, much better than I expected. <laughs> Very pleased. So what I'm gonna do now is cut this out. Now I am thinking that it may end up that I go slightly narrower than that, but this is gonna be a good starter. And all I need to do if I wanna go narrower is put this down again, trace round it again, and uh, then I can cut it down. So I have here a, um, I have here a more flexible knife than I normally use. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna very carefully cut around this shape. So, like this, so I'll pop some music on and I'll get this done on both this one and on the other one. Well, there we are, that's done. I did start cutting in the wrong place then, <laughs> um, as you probably saw. But what we can see here is that matches up very nicely. That is now an oval which will have the track on it. Now, I will now tidy up, clear up, and grab the white foam, and we'll start to have a look at how that's going to work. And this is why I might find that I need to do it a little bit narrower. Uh, but of course, I can do it narrower. That's fine. I've got the uh, I've got the equipment to do it. Um, so if I do need to do it narrower, I'll just trim off probably um, a centimeter or two on either side. Um, and uh, but we'll come to that in a second. I'll just go and get the white foam, and I'll show you what my thoughts are. A few experiments involving the base of a Christmas tree and I'm pretty happy actually with the 10 
that I'm going to go with. So I'm going to stick with that. So what we've got here is I'm actually making use for a present that my parents bought me a long time ago that I've never used yet. However, I've wanted to and now I've got the opportunity. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this sled to guide my cut so that I've got it always vertical and I'm hoping that this wand works because sometimes it's a bit dodgy. So we're gonna turn that on and we're gonna try and cut it out. Now you can see I've got two levels. I've thought about this several times. Uh, I was originally gonna put it on top of the uh, 10 centimeter thick uh, um, uh, expanded parasyrene, but I think it's actually gonna work better just to cut it out like this. I'll be left with quite a few off cuts, but I do use this quite a lot, so that won't go to waste. I'll, it'll just go into my big pile of stuff. Um, so I'm gonna cut around here, and I'm not following the line here. I'm following, I'm coming around here because this is where there's gonna be a tunnel. So the line will cut here and then disappear off and it'll go to a square back there. Um, so let's get that turned on, heat it up, and see how well this cuts. And what I'll be doing is my cut will then go through um, into the bottom, as you can see, into the base. Um, and that means that then I can come along and cut that one as well, following along the same line. So that's my plan anyway. So let's see if it's gonna work. Well, that didn't work very well because the wand bent and I was not pushing that very hard. I have been very unimpressed with the wand here in this kit. I'll have a look and see what it's done and I'll come back to you in a second. So I have done that a second time. I did the top line and it was much better. I just went very, very slowly. So I won't film again because it is very, very slow. This is the second layer um, and you can see where that worked quite successfully. I, was, I scored in where I want to follow. And then here I've just put a little bit of a pencil mark in again uh, because that's where it didn't cut through. But that's actually worked okay. I've lifted it off the surface and I'm gonna now do the other cut. Um, and yeah, that's looking good. So I'll get this done and the other half done and then I'll bring you along for the next step when I get to it. I made a little bit more progress on the Santa's Express. What I've done is I've cut out a template for the arches which I've used to draw the arches on for each of these uh, uprights, uh, for each, each of the panels. And what I'm about to do now is I'm using the Proxon rather than the uh, the wand, just because the, the wand was really doing my head in. I may have to go to the wand for some of it, but I'm going to do as much of this as I can on the Proxon. Um, and I don't know whether I'm doing this right or not, whether I regret it, but at the moment I'm planning on cutting these prior to actually gluing it together, mainly because when it's glued together it's going to be quite large, but I probably I might end up with a few pieces that uh, don't quite match up. So what I've got here is two of the, um, of the sections. That is the top. Okay, the other way. There we are. So you can see how that matches up like that okay so this is it's not very bright let me just move the camera a bit there we are so that's how the sections will match up and i'm not too worried about it being a little bit uneven because i will be coming over this with some texture and what i'm doing is i've got the template i've just had to tidy this up slightly which is why it's kind of half done and with a sharpie just drawing around it and then what i'll be doing is i will put that through the Prox on and cut these shapes out. So that will be an arch, and that will be, so the arch will be here, this will be the arch. Oh, need to take that off. Oh, I cut that off. <laughs> so I now need to put that arch, that arch right back in. That's where I had just cut just now. So let me just, doop, like that. And then this will be like that. There we are, so that will be where the arch is, um, and then I'll be able to glue those together, and then that will be a nice solid piece. So what I'll do is I'll get the Proxon on, and I'll start to carve these out. If this doesn't work, then it's just a huge waste of money, but uh, you know, that's one of those things. So let's get that carved, get that cut. So much easier with the Proxon table than it is with the wand. So that now nicely sits on top of there. So what we're gonna do is cut along that and cut along that, and then we'll be able to glue this to that, and then we'll have our first section. So I'm gonna get this done for all of the cuts that I need to do. And once I've done that, I will bring you along to show you what it looks like and demonstrate how I'm gonna glue it. I'm a little bit behind because we had another day without power today, and that really, really did really affect my free time that I have sometimes through the, my working day. 
Um, I couldn't take time at lunch because I'd taken time out to go and get a, a generator. So uh, I'm a little bit behind on this. I'm hoping to get to the fully glued together stage tonight. So I'll be doing a lot of that and I'll bring you along when uh, all of that's cut and when I'm about to start gluing. What I've actually realised is I need to start gluing these together now otherwise we'll get totally confused with all the bits. And I also need to throw away any bits I don't want over into my waste pile, which is getting bigger all the time. So for this I'm going to be using my gator glue, which I really do like. It gives a really strong bond and um, dry, goes off very quickly. So there's even a chance I might be able to get to the, to the next stage this evening, which is going to be the air dry clay, but I doubt it. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using toothpicks and we're going to be using gator glue. So we're going to be doing a two-stage secure. So we'll stick a toothpick and another one in. To give it a little bit of strength and then we will push it together. There we are. And that now, when that goes off, will be nice and strong and also we won't lose track. So that's how I'm gonna glue it. So I'll just get all of that done as I can um, and I'll bring you back when it's all cut and glued and dried and ready for the next step. Nothing I ever do is small or simple, is it? So now I'm coming to a, the, one of the more, more complex or time consuming parts of this build. Not complex, but it's just gonna take a long time and hopefully it will work well, but I'm not 100% sure because it's curved and it's all sorts of complexities and there's gaps and stuff which I'm having to trim down. But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting my air drying clay and I'm going to, I've got my small Dutch bricks roller from Green Stuff World and I'm going to be rollering out clay to cover underneath the arches and either side of the arches all the way around. Not this bit, so that's going to be left because that's cliffs. Um, and probably I'll um, go right up to the edge because then I can uh, put, I'll be using the uh, Luke's APS's modeling compound over that. So I've got to put enough clay over the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm just going to be doing it in the couple of minutes I have here and there during the working day as I am lucky enough to be able to do. Um, I've got a few minutes now at the end of my lunch, so I'm going to get started. Um, and I, I really would like to have this finished this evening, both uh, of the um, uh, both rings finished, um, and what I might ha actually end up doing is not going up right to the very end of here and also where it joins, and that then will mean that when I glue it together, which I'll do next, I can then apply some air dry clay just over the join, um, and I won't have to try and line things up, and it'll make it a little bit easier. I will be covering up gaps with flock and doing uh, painting it and making it look really nice. Um, I've got some white um, grouts to do some, some um, snubby type things. Uh, so it's not supposed to look perfect, but it's just gonna be a lot of air dry clay. So I better get started. Um, you've all seen air dry clay being applied before, but I may well run the camera uh, just with some music, just so you can watch the whole process because I think that could be quite fun. So um, that's what probably is gonna be coming up next. Uh, wish me luck and uh, let's see if I can get it done today. That was a, a lot of air dry clay and there's going to be a lot more going on. I'm probably not going to bother running the camera for the rest of it. You've seen a lot of air dry clay application. What I'm going to do now is apply it all the way around the outside. Now I'm running a little low on my supply so I'm only going to do the outside first and then I'll see what I've got remaining and I'll do the 
inside but where you can see it and then after that maybe I'll have some more because I've ordered some more in but I am running a little on my air dry clay so I'll just get this done and I'll bring you back when it's finished but it's going quite well so far I'm quite really really pleased with how those are looking underneath and uh, yeah fingers crossed this will continue to look good I've moved again because I've finally finished doing all of the air dry clay around the outsides. So this is now how it's going to look. This is going to be the back, that's the front, obviously, because this is where the controller will go. So what I need to do now is glue the sections together. So we've got the join there, and then we've got another join at the back here, and they match up quite nicely. A little bit of shaving off going to be needed on this one, but that's fine. Um, and then I'll let that to dry, and then once that's all uh, sealed, the next steps are going to be putting some air dry clay over the joint here and fixing up a problem I've just seen here where it's broken. I need to do a little bit more air dry clay there. That hasn't stuck very well. Maybe I can fix that with some, with some glue. Um, so yeah, so there's a little bit of patching up to do on the air dry clay. I need to join the, um, the, the two together at the back here, uh, which will be the, um, which will make it look really nice. And then I need to build the tunnel and the little bit of a, a raised area here and glue that on and then it's going to be Luke's APS modeling compound time over here and stick the actual uh, blue um, XPS down where the line is going to go. I'm not going to do it as wide as that. I'm going to make it so it's only just a little bit wider than the track so, so I can then put my ballast on. So we're getting, we're rushing towards the conclusion, um, which is good because I'm rushing towards when I need it done by. Um, so I'll get this glued together just to use some uh, standard um, of the uh, Gorilla glue that I use, Gator glue that I use, um, and pins. And then um, I'll bring you back for the next step when that's done and when we're ready to start sculpting the mountain. With the ring glued together, what we're now going to look at working on is the cliff. So I've just been and marked out where I want to cut. You can see here just some rough markings. Uh, and I'll do this on the uh, Proxon first, and then I'll get out the hot wire tools and carve it down. But probably I'll do that through in the games room. So I'm just going to do this in here uh, because this is an easier place. Um, and there's also a cut on the back that I need to make as well. So let's get that done. No, anyway, I didn't worry too much about following the lines too closely because I'll be carving this all down anyway. But that now is the shape that we want. So what I'm going to do is go through to the games room, have a look at it, cut, mark out again where the tunnel is going to be because I'm going to need to carve that out as a hole underneath. I think the car that goes roughly from here to here. And then this will be built up um, so that it's cliffs. And there may even be another section, maybe even that section on top. But I'm not sure. We'll find out when I get when I look at it. I'm making this up as a, oh, sorry. I am making this up as I go along. I've been, I've just been and measured up where I want to have the tunnel, and I've marked out using the track so that it's definitely not going to be too close to the walls. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hot wire foam factory cutter, which I actually like, which is their routing tool, um, and I'm going to do my best to follow those lines and to route this out. Now, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do when you can't see how deep you're going, but it's not going to go through too far. And as you can see, it cuts really quickly. It's much better than their wand. I much prefer this tool of theirs. And while it might take several passes, it will do a good job and it will result in quite a nice tunnel, which while it might look rough, you're not going to see inside it, are you, at the end of the day? So don't pull too fast, otherwise you'll end up dragging and then you'll end up not getting the depth you want, but you will be able to do two multiple passes and that will then resolve it. So if we pull that out, you can see I've routed out a really nice shape. Not deep enough yet, but we can keep adjusting the shape of the routing tool to get close to the edges and it will just take several passes. So I'll get this done and then it'll be time to start shaping the rest of the contours and deciding whether I want to have more on top of this or not, which I think I do. Anyway, onwards. Let's see if we can do this. Next up, I've just been out and I've traced around, giving a little bit of a gap, actually closer to the tracks. 
Now the reason for this is, is I want this to just be uh, like um, the slight mound which tracks sit on, which have the ballast on. So I might, it won't even probably end up being this thick, but this has been a really useful, this blue stuff, blue foam has been really useful to help me get an idea of what I'm building and it's been good to use. I could possibly have ended up just using cardboard, it's been a bit of a waste of blue foam, but whatever. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my flexible blade again to cut along this line. Now I'm not worried too much as long as I don't go too stray too far and I want to have a slight bevel because I'll be beveling the whole thing. Just needs to be flat on top where the actual track is. So there you are, that's one quarter done. I'll get the rest done and then I'll bring you back when I'm about to go and glue it down which will be the step after this. I went and I put this on the board and I ran a pushed one of the carriages around and unfortunately it isn't a deep enough cut. So I've been thinking about my solutions and what I'm going to do about this. And while I wanted to do a tunnel, um, I've kind of had a play around with it. I'm happy with how it looked, but it's obviously not worked as well as I wanted it to. What I've realised I, I can do, I've got three options, I think. One of them is to put a layer underneath this. So lift this up a bit by having uh, sandwiching another layer underneath. The second option would be for me to try and carve out more in this valley that I've made um, and try to get it so it's high enough, but it's actually going to be a little bit difficult to do that. Um, and the third option, which is what I'm going to do, has several uh, different reasons why it's a better idea. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally cut. <laughs> I'm going to cut down and have these as separate pieces. What this means I'll be able to do is to glue this on before I put the track in place and then do the cliff face and what have you and get that started without having the, the track in the way which may then get covered in gunk and what have you. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to put a section over the top which I can glue on and I can have that as not being so as cliffs. So this is going to be cliffs with bark, which I want to get done this evening. Um, and it means I can get that done without having to worry about the track because if there's a hole here and a hole here and there's nothing there, I can drop the track in place and glue it on after I've finished. So I'm going to use the Proxon to cut that and uh, that will then mean I can go away and I can glue that section on and this section on now and then a little bit later on this evening I'll be able to go out there and stick on my bark to make the uh, cliffs and finish off doing all of the uh, texturing that I want to do, all of the contouring sorry, I want to do on these sections. So yeah, let's get that cut and then go and get that glued. There we are, that's perfect. So that now will work like that and I'll be able to go and glue that in place. So I'll go and do that. Now I'll just use the gator glue, weight it down and then when I go to do the contouring I'll bring you along then. Angela very very kindly went out and got me these ball bearings. Um, they're actually BBs I believe, the smallest ones. Because what I would like to do on this diorama now is put a little pile of cannonballs. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of PVA glue and put it down on this little square of paper, cardboard even, and start to drop these cannonballs into the PVA. And what I'll do is I'm going to make a little pile, like this. Yeah, let's do five. I should just, yeah, okay. And then we'll drop another little blob of PVA on top, and we'll drop another couple on. If they'll stick, there we are. And what we'll do is, when that's dry, I will come in and paint it, and I will also cut out around it so that it's not very, um, so that it's only a very, very like small base around the edge, and then I'll paint it black. And that then will be just a little pile of cannibals. If it stays, I maybe should wait for it to dry before I try and pile more on. There we are. That'll be a little pile of cannonballs, which will look really nice. Now, I've also got some more BBs coming, which, uh, sorry, not BBs, more, more um, ball bearings coming. And when they come, I'll make a few more stacks just like that. But that's how I'm doing it. Very, very, very simple. I was going to start carving away and making this sloped up and what have you, but I've decided against it. Uh, I may end up 
doing something a bit different here. But for now, I'm, I'm happy and I'm going to start to work uh, on a little bit more while I think about what to do on this section. Uh, I'm going to be putting the um, some cliffs. And my cliffs, how I do cliffs is literally with bark, as you can see. I just use uh, tree bark that I've collected. Uh, it comes in our wood delivery. So that's how I'm going to do the cliffs. And this is going to all be cliffs. And here is going to all be cliffs all the way around the inside. And then here is going to be cliffs and then the other side there as well. So that um, it will look really cool, I think. But the first thing I need to do is I need to glue down this. And I've decided I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave it with quite a pronounced bank. I can always build up with a little bit of Luke's APS modeling compound, which I'm going to do anyway to make it a little bit harder wearing. And so that will just give me a little bit of space so I can build up towards it with the compound. So I'm going to come along with my gator glue and I'm going to glue these little sections, um, little raised sections down onto which will eventually go the actual track. I want to say eventually, it needs to be pretty soon. It is now 11 p.m. I've had another evening working on Tawny and lost a lot of my hobby time, which is not good when I'm in this much of a hurry on this build, but hey, life is life. So we'll put our gator glue on like that, put it in place, it does all fit nicely and then we'll just weight it down. That's the easiest way to do with this stuff. It does go off very, very quickly. So I'm going to do that now on the other ring as well. And then I don't know whether I'm going to start putting uh, cliffs up. I think I am going to start putting cliffs up this evening. I've got a little bit of time before I have to head to bed. Uh, so I will show you how I do that just on at least once. I'll be back very shortly once I'm ready to start on that process. So let's make a start on this bark. So what I've got here is a section of bark which is going to fit quite nicely there. So I again use my gator glue because it's brilliant and it glues everything. Put gator glue on, put it in place where I want it to go, which is going to be there. As I say, I may build it out a little bit more. And then just using a clamp, just hold that in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and like a jigsaw, I'm going to build that up uh, then, um, yeah, as much as I can before I feel too tired and can't go on tonight and then I'll have to carry on tomorrow. Um, and that will then look really, really good. And what will happen is the top, I've decided, um, <laughs> I haven't said on camera yet, but this is it. The top that is going to go over the top of this is going to be removable because I want to be able to get in and clean the tracks and I definitely don't want to be in a position where I can't get to a derail train or whatever. So the top will slot on and I'll probably have it so that it's got, uh, so that it kind of uh, will butt up against there with a little bit of an overlap with a lip so that it won't slide off. So that's the idea anyway. So we're going to do this. I uh, don't have to worry about what's going over the top. I will add that on later. So yeah, I'll get that done and I'll bring you back when it's all completed and we reach the next step. Now comes the next long process, which is applying the Luke's modeling compound. I will add up how much as gets added, but basically I've got enough bark. I don't want to go too crazy with it. I'm happy to fill in and do a um, stone texture with the modeling compound, but I'm going to go all the way around the edges of this mound um, and all over any exposed foam, basically, apart from on the top there. Um, and then when that's done and dried, I'll be able to cut a section to sit on top and then model that as well. So hopefully that'll be a bit later. I'm going to crack on now, I'm not going to chatter too much. Just got to get it done. I really don't have very much time left on this project. So um, I will bring you back to show what it looks like. If you want to see some epic modeling compounds, then go and check out my lakes and uh, Riverfronts video from Battle Games Middle Earth and you'll see lots and lots, six kilograms to be exact. Let's see how much this takes. The next step is going to be painting and I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to do the bricks first. So I've got this paint which is the dark red that I really like, like the ready brown that I really like for my for bricks. And what I'm going to be doing is just coming along and not doing a full dry brush but also trying not to paint too much and I'm going to cover all of the bricks and the idea here is that it gives it a lot of colour but it does leave some of the red behind, some of the white behind um, in the gaps. So it's almost like a, it's almost a dry brush but not quite and this is how I generally do my bricks. So I'm going to get this done on all of the bricks as you can see it doesn't take very long. I need to remember that I need to do underneath the arches as well 
and try not to have too much on my brush. It's not a dry brush, like I say, heavy overbrush maybe. I'll get that done. Might take two coats. I don't want to go too overboard, as I say. Um, less is more in this situation. Just brings out all the texture and gives it a really nice colour. So I'll get that done and then I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. Now that I've done the painting on the outside, or at least the first coat, I'm now going to come along with my black um, grout and sand mix. Um, this is temporary because eventually I will hopefully be putting some, um, some air dry clay on the inside. But just to make it hard and make it so it doesn't actually get damaged, I don't want to be putting the Luke's modelling compound all over the inside. I'm just going to paint this on the inside and I'm also going to paint it on the back of the diorama where, the, where it will go up against the wall. Just so that it's not bare EPS, which is not very hard wearing. So I've got a big brush, um, I've mixed up my normal quantity, I've not gone overboard on how much I've mixed. Um, and if I need more, I'll get more. But yeah, I'll just paint this all the way around. So I'll uh, bring it back for the next step. This is moving on. Um, his fingers crossed I'll get this done in time even. You never know. Stranger things have happened. The cannonballs have now dried. So what I'm going to do very, very carefully is come in with my sharp Stanley knife and trim off most of the base because we don't need all that base. And then once that's done, then I'm going to get some very watered down black paint and I'm just going to, I might actually even dip it, I'm just going to like drop it in or drop it over the top and that will both colour the brown so it's not so obvious and also take away some of the shine that's on the BBs. But I think these look great. They were maybe a little bit big, scale big, but this is for a war game and for a display piece, not for a natural scale diorama. So they'll be fine. Um, it might be that I get some more, um, a different size. If I do, then that's great. I'll do the same thing. But yes, yeah, so now the, uh, the task is just a little bit of very, very watered down black paint and uh, that will be done. So I'll just go and grab that and then I'll show you how that looks. I've made a little bit more progress on these two of first. Not very much because I've had other things. I've been trying to get the uh, Rosie's uh, Santa's Express done. Uh, however, I had a little bit of time during working hours, as it happened, waiting for a call. And so I spent 10 minutes and this is a fiddly old kit. But what I've managed to do is I've got the front steering on, as you can see, and I've also got the uh, hook, the tow hook. And the other thing that I've done is I've stuck down the miniatures, the figures, to some wooden, um, to some wooden things, some handles so that I can paint them. Because what I'm going to do now is this is now ready for priming. So I'm going to take this down, prime it. I'm going to prime these in grey and this this in black, uh, because I think that's probably what I want to do. Um, and then once that's done, I'll put some basic colours on at the bottom underneath here. Because the main reason I'm priming it now is the next step is going to be to put the wheels on for the tracks and then I wouldn't be able to get in. So I'd rather do that now. So anyway, there we are. That's the pro progress I've made. Really fiddly kit, not the greatest of instructions, but I'm really enjoying it. It's good to get back to real kit building as it were after so much time doing scratch building and painting up wargaming miniatures. It's really, really cool to do a proper scale model. As you can see, I've put a big lump on top of the flat area at the back. And I've just finished putting the Luke's modeling compound on it, so it's still a bit damp. My next step is to paint all of the rock faces. I'm just going to come in with the black paint. I'm not going to use the uh, grout mix, just black paint. So I'll be putting black paint all over this and uh, over here and also inside the cutting. So I'll get that done. I will uh, maybe run the camera for a bit, uh, but it's just painting black paint. So I might, but I might run it because it's cool. Um, and then uh, when that's dried, I'll be able to dry brush it and then that'll be the uh, rock done. Once I've done the black paint, I'm then going to come and paint all of the rest of it with my brown paint. So everywhere where I'm going to have um, either um, grass or trees or what have you will be painted and also the, the actual track bed, I'll paint that with the, uh, with the brown paint as well. So I'll do both of those things, uh, run the camera for a bit of uh, both, uh, both processes and then, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're flying towards a conclusion now.
So I got up this morning with the plan of doing some dry brushing, but as you can see, there's quite a lot that has actually been missed in the uh, black, uh, particularly um, in the uh, along the inside of the cutting. So um, if we zoom up and to the right, you'll see this. It's going to be a bit of a harsh tra transfer, uh, but there's a lot of white there. So what I'm going to do is come along with a smaller brush and I'm going to touch those areas up and I'll do the dry brushing later. So I'll bring you along when I'm ready for the dry brushing. Just thought I'd point that out that that happens as well to everyone. So if it happens to you, just touch it up with a smaller brush and it'll be fine. So I ended up doing that. It took ages to finish off picking out all of the black, but I'm pretty happy with how I've got it now. So what I'm going to work on now is I've decided, I wasn't going to, but I've decided I am going to use the brown grout mix. So this is brown grout mixed with dust that I picked up from the garden um, and dried. And I'm going to paint this over all of the areas that I'm going to have as uh, earth. Um, and the reason for this is, is because of the texture it's going to give, because I can then come along and give it a really nice dry brush. I was hoping to get away without this stage. I should just have done it because I kind of knew I would have to. Uh, because it's going to look a lot better and I'm not wanting to really cut corners. I don't want to waste time. I've got lots and lots of time to work on this, but I also don't want to cut corners. I want it to look really excellent. So I'm just going to go along and this is going to go on all of the areas that are now brown. And part of this, it will also mean that I can then cover up the white areas in the same way as I did with the black, which is a real pain sometimes to get it to a stick, as you can see. And then when that's gone off, I'll be able to do my dry brush and make it look awesome. So I'm going to get that done. I'm not going to run the camera. Um, I think that's enough footage of me painting on this YouTube channel, if you're not sure. I may do a standalone video actually on how I do the grout mix. So I think that might be quite useful for people. If you're not sure how to go about it, it's really, really simple. So um, I might do a quick Thursday video on that and uh, Add that to the bottom of all of my videos. So yeah, I'm gonna get that done, paint it all on. It dries very, very quickly. Um, so a bit later on today, I'll be able to come around and do the dry brush and I'll record again when I'm doing that. With the grouting done and all over, all of where the um, dirt is, I'm now gonna come along where I thought I was first thing this morning. I'm gonna do the heavy over brush on the, on the rocks. So I've got my darker grey and I've got a brush. Uh, I'll run the camera and put some music on and we'll get this done. I really love this process, doing the dry brushing. So with that overbrush done, we can move pretty much immediately on to a very light, lighter grey dry brush and then I'll come along with different colours and really make it interesting. So this is going to be very light indeed and it will bring out just the edges. So this is much more of a traditional dry brush than I was doing before. So I'm just gonna make use of the newspaper that I've got here to dry the brush before I run it very lightly over the top of the rock. And it doesn't seem to do very much, but then as it dries, it does more and more and more. So don't overdo it. You can always come back and add more if you're really unhappy after you've gone over it once, but don't overdo this step while you're doing it, like I just did there because it's very, very hard to, to remove, but it does make a difference, as you can see. So I'm not gonna run the camera for all of this because it's very quick, and I thought I'd just do a bit of a close up on this area and explain a little bit more about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in case you haven't come across this technique before. And I'm just gonna whip round now the rest of the rock, doing exactly the same thing, and then I'm gonna do some odd colors, like fluorescent orange and green and what have you, because rock is not black and white, it is multicolored. So I'll bring you along for that when I get to it. Next up is more dry brushing, but this is actually gonna be on the grout that I laid down earlier, which I think is dry enough, just about. I'm brushing this a little bit. Um, so I might stop if I find out that it's not dry enough, but I'm running out of time, so I need to carry on. So I'm gonna use my Africa paint for this, which I really, really like for doing dry brushes over this paint. So we're going to take, it really is a dry brush, so we're going to take most of the paint off and then we'll come along, there's too much paint still, come along and just dry brush over the top of this. There we are, we're getting there, good. Anything that goes a little bit too, I will be able to cover over with, with the, with the um, 
flocking which is going to be next. But this is just to add a dry brush over the top of the grout. Yeah, it's going to go fine. It's not too dry. Not, that's fine. So yeah, I'll get this done. Same technique, but I need to have less, less on my brush than I had there. So um, yeah, I'll get the rest of this done um, and I'll bring you back for the next step, uh, which will be starting to flock, I think. Yay, very exciting. I admit that I have run my truck tester LED thing on here, which is not gonna work because I've got the power off. So I have run it round, but now this is the first time I'm gonna to attempt to run the actual train. Oh. Let's see if we get all the way around, going backwards. Santa's Express. Obviously this is not nailed down. There's a little bit of dirty track there that it needs to get past. So let's run it forwards. A little bit of a 50% speed. This is about as fast as I'm going to be running it. Right, there's a little problem there that obviously the uh, the rail connector I can see there is not right over there, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But other than that, that runs fine. Woohoo! Thank goodness for that. <laughs> well, with that roaring success behind me, let's crack on with the next thing. I have my homemade flocks here in these buckets, and what I've got here as well is my terrain glue, which I will have a link always in the description of every one of my videos since I made the video. Uh, it's just PVA glue or um, just normal wood glue mixed with water to be quite watery and then with a dash of dish soap in to keep it from going off and also to help it to spread a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to flock over the areas that are brown. I'm not going to flock on this because this is where the track's going to go, but I'm going to flock all the way around the edge of the tracks and on these flat areas and also up there. Now this back area here, the the um, the the kind of hill will have some trees on it. They're on order. They're not here yet. This is they're not going to be part of the uh, it first going around the tree, but I'll be able to get to that and put them in when it's in place, and I will show you how I do that. Uh, so don't worry, you won't miss out. Um, but I'm I'm not so I'm not going to completely finish it. I'm just going to do that basically because I'm not totally sure how many trees I'm going to put on it just yet. But I am going to flock all around the sides of the track. Um, and this first flat area here just so that I can then get to glue in the track in which is my ultimate goal for tonight is to have the track glued in weighted down and then tomorrow I can come along I can do the um, the stones between the tracks whatever they're called it's gone for me whatever um, and then then we're done <laughs> and we're ready we so uh, on time even so let's crack on with this uh, I will run the camera a bit uh, and just show you how I do it um, it's a very simple technique uh, but I'm just going to grab myself get myself all set up and then I'll bring you back and we'll focus in just on this little area here and then I'll crack on without the camera running because it's easier for me to run around like that and I'm still rushing for time So I've just given my scenic glue a good shake. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on and we're gonna paint it on. Now, I don't wanna cover all of this. I want it to be a bit patchy. So we're not gonna put scenic glue everywhere. But basically, you put your scenic glue where you want your flock to go, which is pretty obvious, isn't it? So we'll just uh, do that. There we are. So once you've got your scenic glue where you want it to go, what I do is I have a three color technique. So first of all, I come along with my darkest green and I put the darkest green on first. I'm actually running out. <laughs> this, is, this pot has lasted far longer than I expected. I need to make some more, um, and I will do a video on it when I do, because this is actually a color I made myself, so I'm going to try and color match it. So anyway, once you've got that green on, you go and you get the other green that you want, which you haven't yet opened the box because you're, you're silly. <laughs> Um, we'll do this one. Um, and so then you put on a slightly lighter green. So let me get that done. So the lighter green comes on and adds a highlight. Like this. And you can see I'm really not trying to cover it all. I know a lot of people who do really, really thick co co colorings, but I quite like having some of the dirt showing through. And with that one, I then come along with 
my lightest green and let's put this in very few places. So this is a very much a highlight layer. And finally, we go back to the darkest, which is probably why I'm running out of it. And we just tie it all together with a very, very fine scatter of the darkest, like that. So I'm gonna do that around the whole of the layout and uh, I'll bring you back when it's done and show you what it looks like. So there we are, first layer of flock done. And I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I'm gonna let that dry now. I'm gonna go and uh, spend a bit of time with Rosie. I'm really pleased with how this is coming on. I still need to do quite a lot of work on the rock facing, I think. Um, it's still a bit dark, uh, but it's giving a nice contrast and I'm really happy with how the colors are coming out. And particularly, I'm excited to see the train working, obviously. So yeah, I'll let that dry now, have my uh, dinner, uh, come back this evening and see what else I can do once Rosie's asleep. So yeah, onwards and upwards. Uh, Santa's Express is definitely gonna run though. The next step, this being relatively dry, involves alcohol, <laughs> but not the sort you're gonna drink. This is in a spray can and it is the 90% alcohol, 99% alcohol, very high alcohol content. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this all over everywhere where we've got our flock. And then we're going to put more of the modeling glue on top, or more of the terrain glue on top. So I'll just show this on this area and then I'll get the rest of it done off camera. So we give it a good soaking. And then I use a dropper to do this. I know other, some people get a lot of success using a spray can or spray like the same, same sort of spray, but I always find that it kind of clogs up and it doesn't work very well for very long. So I've got these big droppers and I can pick up quite a lot of, of glue and then I could just drip it along like so. And because of the 90% uh, alcohol that will basically spread in nicely and what we can do after that is we can come along over the top and spray it again to really make sure that it spreads if you haven't done a very good soaking as I've not done a very good soaking. This will take a while to dry. I think this is probably going to completely knock my plan to uh, do the um, track, glue the track in place tonight. I very much doubt this will be dry tonight especially with the temperatures we have now. It's not very warm in here but you need this, otherwise the flock will lift. You need to give it a really good covering of PVA. One thing that a lot of people will find as well, or and I probably will, is that it does sometimes take a long time to go clear when you're doing such a thick coat. Don't panic, just leave it. It will eventually go clear, as long as you leave it long enough. So yeah, so we're gonna put loads of PVA on here. This is gonna really, really settle it down, really, seal it in place and uh, yeah I'll get the rest of this done off camera so there's a good amount then we can come along and we can spray it again and that will then make sure it really really does spread out and if you're a bit unsure then you can grab yourself a brush and you can also spread it as well so I'll get this done and then I'll bring you back when I'm doing the next step I've just got a little bit of time at the painting desk, which has been really nice, but I'm knackered now, so I'm stopping. I've managed to get the uh, skin tone done on these Indian Braves. I'm using brown sand from Vallejo to paint these, which is a really good go-to for more tanned or darker skinned, but where you don't want to go completely towards the dark end. That's really, really cool for these kind of, um, these kind of miniatures. It's working really well. I was planning on getting them completely finished tonight, but yeah, I'm just too tired. I'm gonna do a bad job, so I'm gonna stop. So there we are. Uh, it's nice to get a little bit of progress. I need these to be finished so that I can include them in my diorama. Well, there you are. It's been a really good week. It's been really focused on just one project, which is very unusual for me, but it's good to get it so close to finished. And I've now got a couple of days left and uh, hopefully it will go around the tree on Monday or Tuesday and then uh, Rosie will love it. So you can see whether I managed to achieve that or not next week. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.